friends. Today we're going to talk about comics. Charles M. Schultz was an American cartoonist. He made one of the most successful comic strips of all time called Peanuts with Charlie Brown and Snoopy. Cartoonists are artists who tell a story about a moment in time with their drawings and sometimes words. Originally called strips because of their horizontal boxes, they became more complex and more boxes were added. Now there are whole books of comics and those are called graphic novels. So here's an example of an early comic strip. This one is called Gasoline Alley by Frank King. And this one was printed in 1921. Uh, and when I was getting all this ready, I found some comic strips that dated back to the 1400s even. So the comic strips have been around for a while. This is the wonderful Peanuts comic strip by Charles M. Schultz. And this is a graphic novel, an excerpt from a graphic novel called Baby Mouse. It's another fun one to look at. There are so many Baby Mouse books. So what you're gonna need today is to print out, to print out the panel of comics, the comic panel, sorry, that I had emailed with the lesson plan. Uh, and it's your it's the artist's choice today. So you can choose whatever you want to work with. Um, pencil, markers, crayons. I just wouldn't recommend using paint because the, the way to really make a comic work is to keep your characters or your, um, your subject matters kind of looking very similar from one box to another, which takes a lot of practice, I will admit. So today we're going to do something very, very simple. You ready? Let's go. So first I'm gonna start with my boxes and thank Tallulah again for making our comic strip boxes for us. And what I'm gonna do is draw something very simple. You wanna first plan out what you want your story to say. Um, I'm gonna do something very simple because this is our first time doing this. Um, and I'm going to just do a ball bouncing. So we've talked a little bit about movement um, in, our, in our artwork when we talked about Keith Haring. So we're going to go back to how he used lines to show movement. I don't know if you guys can remember that from, uh, from a few months back in class. But first we're going to think about what we're going to do and the different pictures in each box because each box tells a little part of our story. So normally I try to do this upside down, but this is going to be kind of difficult for me. This is a little bit out of my comfort zone. So I'm going to start with my ball. Um, so I'm going to start with my ball. I'm going to make, make my ball in one spot. And then I want to show my ball is moving. So as I move to my next one, I'm gonna make my ball moving a little bit higher. And then higher still. Maybe it's even going off of the off of the page a little bit. And then it comes back down on this side. And when it gets to the last box, maybe it kind of deflates a little bit. So we're gonna make our ball. Maybe we can make it look like it's going splat. All right, now, we talked about movement lines with Keith Haring. The movement lines are, were very simple marks to make something look like it has motion. So the direction that you're going is the way you wanna show your lines. So our ball is bouncing. So in our second box, we're going to make two movement lines that 
get our balls going higher and higher. And now our ball is gonna come back down. So we're gonna put our lines underneath our ball. Coming back this way and this way. Now that our ball is gonna hit the floor, what's a good word that sounds like something hitting hard on the floor? Think really hard what, what a word could be. Mm, would it make a crack sound? Would it make a splat sound? I think it would make a splat sound. So I'm gonna just write the word S P L A T splat. Just like that. And that sort of tells the story of what happened to my ball. It hit the ground and it went splat. Now that we have our story in, now we can design it. So we're gonna color our ball. I'm gonna take a blue crayon and I'm gonna color it in. So we're coloring the ball. I'm trying to keep it the same color as much as I would love to make it a different color in every box, I want it to show the same in each box so that you know it's all part of the same story. Okay, I've colored my ball in, and then just because this is art class, I just wanna show you what else we can do to make it look a little bit more artistic put a little shadow right underneath our ball. I took my gray crayon and right where the floor would be, I'm making a sort of oval shape with the gray, which would be where the shadow from the ball would be. Just like that. And here we have our very simple first cartoon. See you next time. I can't wait to see what you guys make.